There's plenty of people who work out every day or even every other day, and good for them, but we're lazier, we're busier, or we're just less obsessed. For example, as I record this, I'm only exercising a few times per week, and sometimes you can only fit in, you know, one or two sessions per week. There's no shame in it, life happens. But does that necessarily mean that you're not reaping the benefits of exercise? Well, not quite, because this study has some fascinating insights on exactly that front, focused on brain health, which is heavily improved with exercise. So one major concern, especially as we get older, is the general brain degenerative disorders of dementia. That includes Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, and more. And since exercise and physical activity relate to reduced risk, does that necessarily mean that we have to feel guilty for not getting a sweat on six days a week? The answer is no. Well, then how much physical activity is needed? Well, we'll discuss that. But here's where the no stems from. We're measuring the overall risk of developing dementia. In this case, the participants were tracked over a median time of 8.4 years. So the higher the lines go, the worse your risk of dementia. The red line there is people who don't meet the normal physical activity threshold set to 150 minutes of physical activity per week. Now the blue is the people who hit at least 150 minutes per week, but spread out throughout the week. So. For example, working out four times per week. And the weekend warrior there in yellow is the same amount of activity, but stuffed the majority into one to two workouts per week, typically on the weekend. As you can plainly see, the two active groups had significantly reduced dementia risk compared to the less active. And there weren't any major differences between the two, indicating that the total time is more important than the number of times. But there's more. But the main point here is that the stuffing of the majority of your physical activity in the weekend, so just one or two sessions, is just as protective for the brain as doing many sessions throughout the week. What's really great is that the good news doesn't end there. For one, we're measuring physical activity here, which can include exercise, but doesn't need to. You see, the data was collected using accelerometers, a device worn on the wrist, so it detects overall movement. When the researchers used a model to predict the intensity of that movement, therefore including only moderate to vigorous intensity movement, so if you're curious, the model was clocked at being about 90% accurate, and it likely wouldn't bias any particular group. Anyway, the point here is that physical activity is a broad term that includes exercise, but doesn't necessitate exercise. So even if you don't work out in the traditional sense, if you're doing regular manual labor like yard work, construction, and so on, that all counts towards this dementia protection. I'll give you some uh, generalizable instructions in a few minutes. The second bit of good news comes down to the actual total amount of physical activity. So we discussed in initial 150 minutes as the uh, cutoff, but when looking at less activity, so do we still experience benefit? Because 150 minutes per week isn't nothing either. Before we get to that, I'm covering dementia in general here, but I have more to say on stroke risk, Parkinson's directly, depressive disorders, and more, along with how age plays a factor. Now I'm covering all that in the full analysis which you can access as a Physionic Insider member, along with uh, live sessions with me, a regular podcast, articles delivered to your inbox, and more. Like, I don't know, the Insider community, or these are over here. Check out the Physionic Insiders. The link is in the description box. Okay, so 150 minutes per week is doable, but it's not necessarily easy for everyone. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook you up with a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity of just 115 minutes per week. Now that's my final offer. I don't think that my manager will let me go lower than that. My manager's name is Data. So yes, even when the threshold was reduced to 115 minutes per week, that's just two installments of 57 and a half minutes per session, and you can walk away from here with a brand new 23% dementia risk reduction. 
And fascinatingly, doing more does not supply additional benefit. All right, all right. Jokes aside, in plain English, 115 minutes of total moderate to vigorous intensity physical activity per week, even when the majority is lumped into a single session, has an equal dementia protection relationship as doing more total physical activity or doing more sessions. Now, I did mention that I wanted to cover a few generalizable tips on how to apply this. So I'll touch on that next, but I do want to point out a few things too. Since these data are associative, it should be mentioned that the researchers did adjust for possible other factors that could explain these results here. So after all these adjustments, we see the results that we've been going over. Still, there are other limitations to study types like this. So is there wiggle room for other changes in the future? Definitely. Do I think they'll be major? No, the direction of the benefit will likely remain. That said, Here's some actionable guidance on how to think about all this. First, I'd get an average of your heart rate at rest, just so you know what your heart rate is in general. Then you'd have a running tally of what activity you can do that does two things. So one, it has to raise your heart rate. And two, it is difficult to talk while active. If those two are met, you are more than likely within the intensity range studied. If you do these for 115 total minutes per week or lumped into a single session per week, you will fit perfectly into what is outlined here. Yes, there are more exact ways of identifying the intensities, but for a quick guide, those two instructions are adequate for most situations. So in simple English, being physically active with at least moderate intensity meaning difficulty talking because you're out of breath and your heart rate is elevated for 115 minutes or more per week, even when it's lumped in, crammed into a single session, tracks with brain health protection, indistinguishable from doing more or more frequent physical activity. But what if I could do way less physical activity and reduce your overall risk of death? Well, there's a fascinating study done on a pretty wild claim. Just one or two minutes of activity can have profound impact, and it's called a VILPA. And I cover it right here. I hope this was helpful, and I'll catch you in the next one.